In October last year, just in time for Halloween, a Shudder original film titled The Angry Black Girl and Her Monster was released, which is essentially a modern retelling of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I didn't get around to watching it for a little while, so once I did, there were about a month's worth of reviews stacked up. I typically don't read reviews before watching movies I've already decided I'm going to watch. I do, however, read reviews after I've watched something because I'm curious as to whether or not other people noticed the same things or felt the same way about various aspects. After I watched, right at the top of the review page was a one-star review which simply read, Once you see the director of this film, it will all make perfect sense. You don't have to look up director Bomani J. Story to know they are referring to the fact that he is a black man and the film stars an almost entirely black cast while displaying dangers and pitfalls which plague marginalized communities as the backdrop for the story. I continued scrolling and found dozens of one-star reviews which all echoed various flavors of the same rhetoric. Race baiting, political agendas, propaganda, regardless of whether they had actually seen the film. In fact, a not insignificant number of the reviewers stated they hadn't and wouldn't watch it simply because the words black girl being in the title, and then go on to cite race baiting political agendas and propaganda once again for a film they self-admittedly had not seen. Many of the arguments made no sense, not that there's any sense to be found in bigotry of any kind, because the complaints were about films like this painting white people as villains and people of color as heroes. First of all, there are four white characters in this film, none of which are named, and all four combined had approximately three minutes of screen time. The meat of the drama takes place between members of this community of color, and even the violence which kicks off the plot takes place between rival gangs. Second, there are no heroes in this movie, just as there are no heroes in the original story of Frankenstein. Now, I'd like to say I thought the movie was just okay. I thought the performances from titular lead Leia de Leon Hayes and Chad L. Coleman as her father elevated it from three stars to four, and otherwise there wasn't anything truly spectacular in the film's composition. But these hateful people who cannot stand to sit quietly by while a black auteur tells his story choose to attack what they believe to be slights against them. And honestly, if you see every portrayal of a racist white person in a film as a personal attack, you are probably a racist white person. Race baiting was the most common phrase I found used, and it's used in entirely the wrong way, insinuating that somehow the film is slagging off white people, despite a distinct lack of any prominent white characters. Also, the bafflingly fallacious phrase reverse racism was peppered in, as if racism can only be aimed by white people at people of color. Then I found the comment, 13% of the film is responsible for 50% of the entertainment. For those who aren't aware, 1350, sometimes 1352, or even 1390 are responses white supremacists will use on news and social media sites. The quite mistaken rationale behind that is the once again massively fallacious idea that 50% of murders in the United States are perpetrated by black people who in turn only make up 13% of the population. These numbers were pulled and grossly manipulated from a nearly 30 year old report published by the Department of Corrections to paint black people as violent and animalistic just as so many other stereotypes were designed to do. So we have this what I would say middling and otherwise forgettable film on a streaming service these people pay to have access to, garnering ignorance at best and actual white supremacist parlance at worst. I'm not naive. I know racism has always and will always permeate every tangible facet of society, but it was surprising to see such backlash against something I would have thought wouldn't be worth the effort of pushing back against. Then I got to thinking, what about much more famous and popular instances of black stories in horror. The first one I looked up was Get Out, a critically acclaimed film for good reason, and one of my all-time highest rated horror movies of any subgenre. I filtered IMDb for one-star reviews, and, as expected, it was a torrent of white guilt-derived defensiveness and wild conspiracy theories about bought and paid for review scores and Oscar nominations to further the agenda of the blacks, which is actually really how it was phrased, yes. A few review quotes, highly irresponsible and offensive to any white person, unapologetically blatantly racist. If Jordan Peele's intention was to contribute to deteriorating race relations in this nation, then he may have succeeded. You have the feeling this is about the director, up on his soapbox expressing his racism towards whites. I went on to look up the rest of Peele's horror films in which race plays a factor in the plot, Candyman and Nope, as well as a few other black stories in horror such as Sorry to Bother You and His House. The same things, of course, cropped up in the one-star reviews touting political motivations as the entire purpose of the films to exist and several reviews said the movies are only for one demographic, which I assume they mean people of color. I also noted something that I knew but never consciously acknowledged. Good and thoughtful black stories in horror are a relatively new phenomenon, less than a decade's worth, really. 
In the past, we had black stories in horror, such as those in Death by Temptation, Vampire in Brooklyn, Ganja and Hess in Blackula, but only recently, with films like Get Out, His House, and Sorry to Bother You, have these stories begun to use their platform for awareness rather than exploitation. That's when I thought back to those reviews, which said these movies are only made for one demographic. If they're made for any singular demographic, it's probably mine, straight, middle-class white men. The way I see it is watching films in my favorite genre, which are entirely based from a different perspective, people of color, queer, feminine, it's like having a conversation with a friend who comes from a different background than I do. It happened right here on this channel, in fact. When I had Jose on to do the Blumhouse tier list, aspects of movies Black as Night and Madres came up, which he, being of Mexican descent, had unique perspective on. If there's a thesis to be derived from this video, I suppose it's that we need to support and stand up for black stories in horror and accept their message as the target audience. There is a myriad of excellent black stories in other genres, but they've finally come to horror and with great results. I don't consider myself an expert on many things, but horror is one of them, and to see people in the horror community, my community, and chosen family simply not understanding these films at best, and using the parlance of white supremacists in reviews at worst, I felt I have a leg to stand on to do my part for awareness. Just so you know, while I usually enjoy responding to comments, I won't be for this video. I've said my piece, I stand by it. Whether you agree, disagree, or have alternate interpretations is your business to mull over. I will ask that inevitably when somebody puts ignorant, racist, or hateful things in the comments below, don't lower yourself to engaging with it, especially if you're one of the people on here who actually knows me personally. Just let it sit there and echo through the halls of the internet forever. Just as the bigots couldn't attack the angry black girl and her monster on its merits as a film, instead turning to hate speech to demean it and its director, these people cannot help but to show their true colors. I say we let them, right down there in the comments. Let them expose themselves as the loathsome, antiquated, and rapidly evanescing breed of person they really are. I'm Smokey Lyle, this is Horror and Cats. Be good to each other, stay safe.